and Ross Perry of uh, Husky Injection Molding System. So he's uh, been on the speaking tour here at the circuit for a number of years. So I had to go all the way to Singapore to meet him. Uh, but uh, he's been a friend for a long time of uh, PTI and the Packaging Conference. So. His speech is going to be about unlocking the PT possibilities with technology, and uh, I think you'll pick up uh, his subtle main accent, but I think maybe it's mostly gone now, Ross, uh, unless you can uh, whip out a couple sentences for us. It's nice of Scott to mention that I'm from Maine. It's a beautiful place. I tell people I'm from Maine, I do speak English as a second language, and for people who have been there, they'll understand what I mean. So thank you to PTI and to John Maddox for inviting us here, and thank you all for attending this session. John asked that it not be a commercial for Husky, so I have no pictures of Husky machines. Uh, but for those of you who maybe do not know, Husky is the, is the uh, leading manufacturer of preform and closure, uh, closure producing systems in the world today. I want to talk to you about PET and PET in the bright future that we believe it, it still has in the packaging industry as a material of choice. And so I was speaking with one of my colleagues in Canada last week and he said, Ross, you're just like PET. I said, really, what do you mean? He said, well, you're 50 years old, still going strong. I said, okay, <laughs> numbers are a little off, but uh, the message is correct. So it is interesting, I think, to note that the, the PET bottle for a carbonated soft drink uh, was patented in 1973 by an engineer from DuPont. So that's 44 years since uh, the first PET bottle was, was, uh, was patented. And yet, when we look to the future, the future is bright for PET. That's the, the topic of our, uh, of our presentation here today. We're starting to refer to it at Husky as the next frontier of packaging and that how PET is opening this next frontier. We'll go through a few sections here this afternoon, stimulating challenges, untapped segments, the best ever foundation and the technologies that are enabling these advances. So could we say that PET has never faced such stimulating challenges? We saw a lot of charts yesterday and here's another view of our, uh, of our position as, a, as PET in the industry. But despite some slowing growth of consumption in various parts of the world, the PET material uh, continues to fuel, be the fuel for high value applications, and we'll talk more about that. So if you are the architect of a product strategy today, and you can continue to look to PET as a driver of increased value. So as we talk about different aspects of a product, whether it be flavors and sweeteners like we saw yesterday, examples of, or more occasions, whether it be on the go or with meals, more price points. PET continues to, to offer many alternatives for you in your packaging decisions. So whether this be entry packages as we list there, at home consumption or affordable frequent consumer, large size at home, or as we'll talk more about in a few minutes, this single serve phenomenon. So I think Greg Campbell mentioned yesterday afternoon the, the decline in the consumption of uh, carbonated soft drinks. This graph shows it on a per capita uh, volume from 1969 to 2015, and you can see a decline. You could look at that with some concern. Or you can look at this slide with, with, the, with excitement and understand the amount of opportunity that has been created uh, in that, as we say, white space there indicated by the red arrow. So 
you can read on the slide that the marketplace is fragmenting and the opportunities for new products and specifically PT as the, as the material of choice and how that can open up new opportunities for growth. We also heard about this phenomenon yesterday in our in the presentations, but with a traditional business model of business to the consumer, where the business designs the products and they're sold to the, to the customer. And now, in today's world, we're seeing this, the future will be the consumer to consumer. The consumer conceives it, the business is delivered, the consumer consumes it. And so we believe that PET and flexible manufacturing systems will be right there in the middle offering solutions uh, for your consumer's delight. So if we say that there is still uh, huge untapped potential, where is it? So this is a little bit of a, of a busy chart, but if you can look at a couple of key points there, the tall gray bar on the left represents food. So these are packages consumed. Uh, this, the yellow dots that you can see represent the compound annual growth rate between 2016 and 2020. So we're in that five year phase right now. And so you can see some good growth in some small volume segments, some steady growth in the larger segments. And then most importantly for us, when we think about PET and opportunities within PET, is the blue bars where you can see the, the, the relative penetration of PET into that market segment. So I think we all agree that in fact, there are tremendous opportunities yet for PET growth, but how? And that's what we want to talk to you about. A lot of these untapped markets, so to speak, for PET require barrier. And whether that be a barrier for carbon dioxide egress or oxygen ingress, uh, as demonstrated there in the, in the picture, or blocking of light for light sensitive products, or even uh, opportunities that we believe exist within PET yet today for changing the aesthetic appeal of products, especially in the consumer, uh, the, the home, home products and consumer goods. You might remember last year at the packaging conference, we had a presentation from uh, this gentleman, Steve Jones, from, the, uh, from Fairlife. And as we heard even as recently as yesterday, that the dairy segment is a declining market and, and uh, how is it then that Fairlife has managed to reverse that trend and to build an amazingly fast growing brand and product uh, in a market that's declining. And so this, this brand, 20 million packages sold in the first year and on its way to becoming a billion dollar brand. We believe that PET is part of that success story. This is a PET bottle. So then as we think about opening the next frontier, there might be something to, to learn by looking at the foundation. What is in place today? And then what, what is it that we're building upon? And when you think about PET and what it offers today, the, the opportunity for product managers, as we said, to position their product where they want in the market and this freedom. So we say that we've never had, brands have never had such freedom with product positioning before. Here's an example. Yesterday we heard how that in the, in the period, I think it was the last five years, how that plastic has outgrown um, other materials during that time frame. And why is it? Well, we believe that it's because of this, the, the freedom, so to speak. Here's a product where um, you have a package, 500 ml, water bottle, less than eight grams. And why is, why is that so important? Because it's price point. It takes tremendous technology to deliver a very uh, cost efficient package that then can be, can be sold to consumers uh, at, a, at a price that is attractive and is fueling, I was amazed yesterday to see 8.5% growth 
in bottled water last year. That, that's you know, a product that's continued to grow for a decade. And to think that especially to achieve that level of growth right, on a huge base today, right? Because it's not a small business growing at a fast rate any longer. So PET was a, was a, a big factor in that. And yet on the other end of the spectrum, here's a product launched in, in Europe uh, last year, 40 grams. I think we'd all agree that's quite an elegant looking package. So, so PET has both an enabler of cost effective, cost efficient packaging, all the way to this tapping into these premiumization uh, opportunities. When we think about PET, it's transparent. It's unbreakable, it's lightweight, it's recyclable. And now we're going to talk to you about how it's also enabling extended shelf life in products. Before we get to that, we can also look at the, the cost to produce. We can say that the cost to produce has never been lower and the safety has never been higher. So this is all a result of Continued, continually driving up output rates, continually driving down energy costs, uh, and also the efficiency of plastic material in terms of utilization per package, and then most importantly, to have repeatability package to package to package, you know, billions of times per year. So now we can talk about the advancement in technologies and how this is also uh, driving what we believe will be the next wave of growth. PT, engineered packages. And so this is, this is the, the possibility by adding a second layer of material, multi-layer preform, a barrier layer sandwiched between two layers of PET for the specific, specific purposes of your product. Most importantly, to make this a cost-effective solution and to drive it widespread in the market, we must have precise control. So between what you have an injection molding machine producing preforms and both within a single shot and then from shot to shot repeatability, we must have precise control of this barrier layer not only to give you the assurance that your product is protected, but more importantly to control the cost because you want to precisely dose just the amount of barrier that you need and no more. This chart shows you a very tight distribution. The red line represents real data from a Husky a multi-layer preform system and you can see that, that uh, what is possible. And in fact, we've demonstrated the ability now to produce preforms 2% by weight with, uh, with our multi-layer preform system. A couple of examples. <clears throat> this is a juice product. By taking a 26 gram preform and concentrating an oxygen scavenger in a multi-layer configuration, so what previously was a blend, where uh, the, the customer was blending an O2 scavenger into the PET material, and then today they're producing this in a multi-layer configuration, concentrating that, uh, that oxygen scavenger in a layer rather than distributing it in the melt, the, the complete uh, cycle of the product, then of the package, I mean, then you now have 40% less oxygen scavenger required and a four and a half percent lower cost to produce. Similarly, this is a carbonated soft drink application that's been launched in the past year. Uh, 345 milliliter single serve multi-layer barrier bottle. And again, by concentrating the barrier material in a layer rather than dispersing it through uh, in, in a blend through the, the full uh, thickness of the preform, we're able to use less barrier material and therefore create a package that's more cost effective. Moving to a milk application, this is where we take a similar approach only with a, with a different uh, purpose. 
and that is to block light. So here we have a, a layer of black PET sandwiched between two layers of white. And with this, uh, this conversion to a multi-layer from a monolayer configuration, we're able to reduce the material costs as well as uh, offer a shelf life of greater than 12 months. This represents an opportunity, we believe, and we hope that we can get you excited about what's possible with PET here today. But this, was, this is, a, is an idea to put a white layer uh, in between two layers of clear. So creating some depth uh, to the, and gloss to the package and creating a premium look. We believe this is an interesting uh, approach to, to introducing PET further into the, uh, the dairy applications. So what have we done by, by introducing a, a, uh, an engineered packaging thought here? Well, I think you probably have all experienced this from before where you have a hot, ta a hot tap and a cold tap in your shower. Well, it's difficult to get the right temperature at the right flow, at the right flow rate. And so maybe you have the right amount of flow, but it's too hot or it's too cold. So the mixing valve technology that's pretty widely used today in our showers allows us to set the temperature we want and then adjust the flow rate. So we're, we're suggesting that this Husky technology, introducing a barrier layer, is exactly the same concept. So what before was a, a solution where if you needed to extend your shelf life, you just needed to add weight to the package and it still was not likely to get you every, to the full distance that you, you'd want to achieve. But now it's, 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 uh, it's now been uncoupled, right? So you can use just the, uh, the right amount of PET that you need in order to give you the mechanical performance required. And then you add the amount of barrier that you need in order to give the shelf life that's required. So this uncoupling or decoupling of, of mechanical performance from shelf life, we think, although it's a very simple concept, we, we believe that this opens up an enormous amount of opportunity for those folks who are designing packages or selecting packaging uh, for their products. Another way to just look at it here is this total flexibility. So cost rationalization for both the product and the supply chain. The last slide I'd like to leave you with is just to mention the possibility also, we heard yesterday about the circular design. So here's a real life example. It's not just theory, circular packaging design for the, for the circular economy. Right, where, where a product literally comes full circle. Here's a practical application of that concept. So where we would take washed, opaque, or colored uh, our pet flakes and reuse them in the center layer of a, of a dairy container where it's white, black, white, like we talked about before. And here is a, is a good use for PET that's available by the recyclers today that to, that it, with current uh, packages is being what we call downcycled. So it's not going from bottle back to bottle, it's going into some, low, some lesser value application like, like carpeting, for example. <coughs> so we're here to suggest the possibility to you today that, that this uh, is an idea, perhaps could be embraced by, by one of you. That is my last slide, so just to, I think, recap, there is a bright future for PET, we believe. We believe that there are technologies that, are, are, that will enable the continued growth of this amazing uh, packaging material that has been 24 years and going strong. We would be happy to take questions. Thank you, Russ.